Welcome back to Vinny's Aquatics. Thank you everybody for joining me today. We're going to talk about nitrates. We're going to talk about nitrate poisoning and the seldom heard of nitrate shock. Plus, at the end, we're going to tell you how to remove nitrates from your tank. So here we are in the top secret underground fish room with Buster, my executive producer. First thing we're going to talk about is what are nitrates? Well, nitrates are produced as a byproduct at the end of the nitrogen cycle. Now, no matter how diligent you are and how much you do to maintain your fish tank, there's always a certain amount of nitrate present in your water. But did you know that clean tap water contains nitrates? Yeah, well, it does. And the amount varies. It depends on where you live. Now, sometimes, sometimes you might have an aquarium and you just can't understand why it's showing nitrate levels of 20 parts per million right after partial water changes and after a thorough vacuuming. So what you do is you test your tap water and you discover that it contains nitrates. I mean, who knew that? In the United States, tap water contained nitrate levels as high as 40 parts per million. So if your ideal baseline is say 10 parts per million, you may need to consider other sources of nitrate free water for your tank. Now, nitrates are also contained in rainwater which is why rainwater is so good for plant growers, but not such a good thing for your aquarium. Hey guys, do me a favor, hit that like button. It really helps with the algorithm. And if you're new, subscribe, and definitely hit that notification bell so you keep up to date on all the new uploads. Now, I recommend monthly testing of your aquarium for nitrate concentration. I think it's, it's absolutely essential. In new tanks, levels of ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate can quickly rise if the tank has not been fully cycled. And you need to check the levels regularly to monitor whether the cycle has been completed successfully. If you have an established tank, testing the water is a crucial part of your routine aquarium maintenance. You should always have a test kit on hand. If you can't afford a test kit, go to your local fish store and they'll test the water for you. Some guys do it for free, some guys charge. I think they should all do it for free. Go ahead. If I'm buying a product for you, test my water for me. So, sponges grow in the ocean. It, it just kills me. I wonder how much deeper the oceans would be if that didn't happen. Oh no, I poisoned you. So what causes nitrates? Well, in a fish tank, nitrates are produced by decaying plant material, accumulated fish waste, decomposing fish food, and general detritus, which is fish poop. We all know that. Well, actually, I didn't learn it until a couple years ago. Also, if your filter media is not maintained correctly, the bacteria contains, it just can't cope with the burdens, so your nitrate levels will increase. Uh, you may say, Vinny, What's the difference between nitrates in freshwater and saltwater? All right, well, in a freshwater aquarium, the level of nitrates should be kept below 25 parts per million. Certainly, I wouldn't go any higher than 50 parts per million. But if you're raising fry or you're attempting to control the growth of algae in your tank, your nitrate level should ideally be below 10 parts per million. Now, on the other hand, with a saltwater tank, that in a saltwater tank, Nitrates are very detrimental for invertebrates and corals. That means they're bad. Therefore, it should be kept at very low levels, ideally below five parts per million. However, certain marine fish can tolerate higher nitrate levels up to say 40 parts per million, giving you a little more leeway if you have a fish only setup, which is known as a fowler tank. Now, problems can occur in marine setups as frequent water changes that are designed to lower the nitrates levels they, that might mean that there's more salt must be added to the tank. Consequently, some fish keepers only top up their tank with fresh water or place what's lost through evaporation. Now that doesn't reduce the nitrate in the tank water, allowing the nitrates to gradually rise to problematic levels. So keep an eye on that if you have a salt water tank and you like to do a lot of top offs. All right, let's get to the heart of this video. The difference between nitrate poisoning in nitrate shock. Now in freshwater and marine tanks, your fish will 
generally begin to be adversely affected when the nitrate levels hit about 100 parts per million, especially if you don't take action to correct it. Fish suffer from stress, making them more susceptible to disease and attacked by parasites, and it interferes with their reproduction. Juvenile fish, they just won't grow properly, and a lot of them are going to die. Also, high levels of nitrates are also associated with poorly oxygenated water, which is going to cause further stress to your fish. So I know you're asking, what's the difference between nitrate poisoning and nitrate shock? And now, excessive amounts of nitrates in the aquarium can result in catastrophic harm to your livestock. There are two forms of nitrate toxicity. The first one is nitrate poisoning. Nitrate poisoning, it's a chronic problem. It occurs over time where the nitrate levels generally increase over a period of weeks. The problem is usually due to poor tank maintenance, overstocking, overfeeding, or a combination of all three, <laughs> if you're doing it. <laughs> the effect of nitrate poisoning is generally fish death, with juveniles and marines being affected by comparatively low levels of nitrate in the water. Now, in cases of nitrate poisoning, often just one or two fish are initially infected. If you don't test the water, the cause of these fish's sicknesses can be overlooked until more fish succumb and eventually fish death actually begins to occur. Now, depending on a fish species, death may not happen for a few days, could even be a few weeks. Now, this one here, this one here, nitrate shock. This is the one I want to talk to everybody about most because I'm not sure everybody thinks about this. Now, nitrate shock is the term it's used to describe the sudden exposure of fish to a high concentration of nitrate. However, the same condition can occur if fish are exposed to a sudden dramatic decrease in nitrate levels. Listen to this. Nitrate shock usually causes fish to die within 24 hours. Most times, the owners are unaware of the problem until it's way too late. Now, nitrate shock usually occurs when new fish are introduced to a tank that already has extreme high nitrate levels. The fish are shocked by the poor water quality, even though the existing residents, they're not affected. See, that, that's, you ever do that? You bring home a new fish and it dies and you can't figure it out because all the existing fish aren't having a problem? That might be a case of nitrate shock. Now, you can also cause nitrate shock by carrying out major water changes to an established tank that already has a high level of nitrate. As the sudden fall, the decrease in nitrate levels, that can also shock your fish. So when you do your water changes, like I said, check your tap water and make sure you're not, you don't want to fluctuate high or too low which, with the nitrates because you could put your fish in a shock. So what should you look out for if you're looking at nitrate poisoning? Well, you're going to see lethargy and sometimes the fish will lay on a substrate poor appetite and a rejection of food, a rapid breathing rate and gill movement, and a disorientation and inability to swim properly. Now, in really advanced cases of nitrate poisoning, your fish may actually curl up from their head to their tail, which is just horrific. So that's the depressing part, that's over. So what do you do if you gotta treat your tank for nitrate poisoning? Well, the first action should be to reduce the levels of nitrate in the tank, of course. However, water changes must be controlled and gradual so that you don't shock your fish as described before. And definitely make sure your tap water, you're not pumping actual more nitrates into your tank. For the first 24 hours of treatment, don't feed your fish. The chances are the fish won't eat the food and the uneaten food is only gonna contaminate the water more, making the problem worse. So how do you reduce the nitrates if they're high in your tank? Well, keeping live plants. Keeping live plants is a very good strategy long-term for keeping the nitrate levels balanced in your tank. Living plants extract nitrate from the water and they utilize it as a fertilizer, helping to reduce the amount of nitrate in the environment. Two, keep your tank clean. Keeping your aquarium clean and well-maintained is one of the best ways to control your nitrate levels. Fish waste ultimately reduces nitrate, so be sure to vacuum the substrate thoroughly every other week or every week to remove the leftover fish waste and leftover food that will otherwise decompose and pollute the water. Another great way to do it, and this is the one I recommend because I can't grow plants. I'm the Dr. Kevorkian of aquarium plants. What I use is nitrate removing filter material. If your tank has a persistent nitrate problem or you just want to do it anyway, 
special nitrate removing filter media can be extremely useful as a tool. And now you search products, you can get these online or from one of your better local fish stores. That's what I recommend. That's what I use in all my filters. And I really do think it helps. Also, keep up with your weekly water changes. You should carry out a partial water change each week to help keep the nitrate levels in the tank under control. Now, I know a lot of us get lazy with our water changes. I'm guilty of it too, but we one of the most important parts of your maintenance. Now, however, listen to me, if your local tap water or your well water already has high nitrate levels, you might want to have to go with something else like deionized water or RO water, reverse osmosis. However, both these options have no mineral content. So the water pH and hardness can change. You're going to have to keep an eye on that. You may need to add a pH buffer or a mineral supplement to correct the parameters to suit your fish. At, you can also use a denitrator filter, which are special nitrogen removing filters that can be used if you have a problem with high nitrate levels in your tank. The problem with this is it can be very expensive and we're not about that on this channel. We're trying to do things under a budget. So that's probably one of the least options you're going you're gonna to do, or at least I'm going to do. Now, another thing you can do is install a refugium, which it's basically a remote location that supports a population of wildlife. When used as a part of a nitrate controlling strategy for marine and reef tanks, a refugium provides a separate environment in which microalgae can be cult cultivated. Jesus. He stinks and I don't like him. Now let's talk about microbes. Various types of live microbes can also be used to control the nitrate levels. Microbes either use nitrate for biomass or to convert it into nitrogen gas, which evaporates harmlessly. There are two forms of microbes, aerobic and anaerobic. Now aerobic microbes are primarily made of heterotrophic bacteria. Oh, I said that pretty good. They take up nitrates quickly, but the downside is they need to be fed some form of carbon. Unfortunately, aerobic microbes can bloom, which is gonna cause oxygen depletion in your water. Now anaerobic microbes, such as non-sulfur bacteria, they're slower workers, but they don't require carbon dosing because they live deep in sand where organic matter is abundant. Hey, what do you call nitrogen after the sun's come up? Daytrogen. So let's wrap this up with a nice little bow on top. Now, although nitrated, it's not as dangerous to fish as ammonia and nitrites. Excessive levels of nitrates in the aquarium can lead to poor fish health poisoning and like I said shock there are many ways in which you can prevent nitrates from accumulating in your tank but the most effective method is to carry out regular partial water changes keep your aquarium clean and well maintained so I'd love to hear your thoughts about this let me know if you have any tips or tricks please leave a comment down below and I want to thank you guys for joining me once again listen if you're not subscribed hit the button join the family and I'll see you next time on Vinny's Aquatics. Woo!